One of the ways the show was simplified during the hit era was abridging the wide amount of characters from previous Tom seasons to only focus on the main cast of eight, later nicknamed the Steam Team, consisting of the first seven characters we had seen from season one and Emily, a season seven newbie. This was most likely done so Hit could make it a different spin on the property, but still keep the roots of the show intact. Season 8 ties with that as it primarily focuses on re-establishing the main cast with some liberties, hence why all the episodes are at least focused on one Steam Team member. The episodes themselves are up for debate as to whether they are good or not during this era. Gordon and James are probably the most consistent characters during this era due to them still maintaining their classic series counterparts. Others, however, got the short end of the stick, such as Toby and Henry. But if you couldn't tell by the title of this video, today I shall be focusing on one character and their treatment during this era. Edward. Edward is a weird case where he has some strong episodes such as Edward the Great, but then also really weak episodes which completely get Edward's character wrong by subjecting him to an individual who solely relies on their physical attributes just like in Saving Edward. It was very clear from day one that the writers weren't sure on what to do or how to write for Edward. Edward has little to no flaws and honestly struggles to carry an interesting story on his own without it not being fully centered around him. His character interactions, in my opinion, rely most on others' boring repetition or stagnation in order to make him seem relevant, especially since the producers by season five and four evidently didn't know what to do with him. Like in both the RWS and the TV show, Edward's exploit is his grand finale to his character. After that, he simply became a supporting character in more episodes, and when he did receive roles from season 9 through 16, they were typically not that good. From season 17 on, he continued to play a supporting role. What the writers tried to do during the hit season was give Edward some flaws. Some worked fine, while others not so much. I will give the writers at hit some credit as they were trying to do something with him. Today, I will be discussing two episodes that dealt with the task of assigning Edward a flaw. More specifically, why I think one succeeded and the other fell short. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Edward Strikes Out is an episode that came around the 10th season of the show. It is the definitive episode that I see fans hate on, some saying it was a worse from the show due to how poorly Edward is written here. Is it as bad as people think though? A new crane called Rocky arrives on the island, but since Rocky is unable to move on his own, Edward dismisses him as useless. When Harvey is later unable to clear some pipes off the line in time that Edward spilled, Gordon ends up running right over them, thus resulting in a terrible crash. Sure enough, Edward goes back to the docks to collect Rocky. Rocky uses his mighty crane arm to lift Gordon back onto the tracks. Okay, well, overall thoughts. I can see the message the writers were trying to get through, which is that it's unwise to evaluate someone based on their outward appearance or even your own preconceived notions. Basically, the don't judge a book by its cover story. I think the episode is a great starter for Rocky. It's a perfect introduction where he gets to prove himself. The general intimidation of Rocky is really cool. Gordon's criticism of Rocky is a bit weird considering he's sort of a so profound on having the mindset of new equals better. Because he is a big express engine, so he would naturally support new and improved concept as long as they weren't replacing him. Additionally, the episode presents a very different Edward. One who attempts to sound impressive when teaching words to Percy and who imitates Gordon's beliefs. Even in the hit era, it's not truly his character. Not only is it extremely out of character for Edward to be influenced by the unfounded opinions of the bigger engines, especially Gordon, especially to the extent where he actively spreads Gordon's shallow, illegitimate ideology onto more impressionable characters like Percy. But Edward has actually been in Rocky's position. I believe the episode served as a checkbox episode for Edward. Checkbox as in that role going to him. This episode had to exist either way to bring Rocky in, but for him to be in that role, I believe that was sort of a checkbox thing considering he didn't have any other lead roles during season 10. James the second best does not count. It definitely feels like a checkbox type episode because Edward being very loved, admired, and all that going to Edward Strikes Out feels weird so it does feel like they were contemplating on who to give it to 
when they chose Edward simply because he didn't have anything to do yet during that season. The episode was probably floating around for anyone to take because they built the episode around Rocky and they needed some sort of conflict. Although Edward may be a little more cynical than I was expecting, I can see what they were going for since they wanted an episode to center around him. Making Edward into the most perfect and flawless character would be very boring and I don't really care what the context is, but I strongly believe Edward should be allowed to get angry, regardless if it is morally right or his personal opinions, as long as it's done in a tasteful manner where context and motives are provided. I've seen two popular arguments on why they chose Edward specifically for this episode. One theory being that Edward just hates Cranes because of his experience in Edward's breast brand, and his one line from Harvey to the rescue. Harvey's different, said Henry. He doesn't even look like an engine, said Edward. The other theory being, and the one I personally lean towards as well, Edward's strong association with the breakdown train throughout the series. It's intentionally made Edward pull the breakdown train a lot during the series, so they probably wanted him to pull Rocky a lot too, which they ended up doing, so they probably wanted to establish the connection right off the bat. He's been pulling the breakdown train in the season 8 to 10 intro, so it is kind of his thing. I believe that serves as a reason as to why the writers wanted to pair him up with Rocky. Now, on to how I would rewrite this story. I've seen a lot of people make the argument that James should have taken the lead role for this episode as it would have suited him much better. But I feel like James's whole thing is like, yeah, cool, sure, whatever. I feel like we have already seen it so many times with James already with the whole, he doesn't like something and has to learn how to appreciate it in the end. See Old Iron where James underappreciates Edward and then realizes in the end that Edward is a very valuable friend. It doesn't help the fact that we literally had an episode in the same season, that being James the second best, where it commentates on that. So I feel as though James would have given a break from that moral where he learns a lot of the time. While substituting Edward with a character like James would align completely the way he consistently gravitates towards Gordon throughout the entire series due to James's well-established vanity to Gordon's shallow input to Rocky. That does feel like a sloppy move. Not saying James probably wasn't considered, but just simply replacing a character seems like a lazy sort of rewrite. So swapping Edward with James in order to fix the episode is a lazy action since Edward can work. The episode would benefit in my opinion if Harvey or the breakdown train were mentioned, and Edward expressed concern that Rocky would take either of their places. I believe a rewrite could work where we could have had Edward be worried for Harvey, have Harvey be really intimidated by Rocky and had Edward thus be skeptical as well. That could work as the basic premise about Edward's unevenness about Rocky's presence. Instead of swapping out a character who could be considered a more fitting role, you can change their motivations and how they get to their own conclusions. The fundamental character decision of Edward following what Gordon said does not feel like him at all. I had this Harvey-centric rewrite idea during the scene where Harvey's picking up the pipes and it's said that he's taking a long time, so Thomas instructs Edward to go get Rocky, in which Edward responds with, No, no, whistled Edward. Harvey is doing a fine job. We must be patient. I think that line could work really well in the context of Edward trying to prove Harvey that he is doing well. Have Harvey realize how much of a big mess it is, tries to do it, and realizes on his own that he can't. And I feel like that could work as a good lesson on knowing your own limits and not being to accept help and see something as help and not something that will actually replace you. Which I don't think the show has ever done. Usually the plot goes as the engines are feared of getting replaced and just end up not getting replaced. Edward's loyalty resides with Harvey since he's known him for longer and depending on how Harvey describes his concerns, it can resonate with Edward where he can relate to him on how he used to think he would be replaced as well by newer and more modern engines. Basically, keep everything the way it is, just take Gordon out and put Harvey in. And have Harvey be sat at the docks and have Edward puff up to Rocky, and instead of having him being rude, have him being cold towards Rocky, but don't have him lean too far towards it because that's where it starts to feel a little too out of balance. 
I will admit, Edward does feel out of place to not respect someone for being themselves though. The episode is not offensive or anything, but more so feels like it serves Rocky more than it serves any of the other characters around them, if that makes sense. Edward's crane bias mindset feels unnecessary. I don't think it was needed and could still give out the same message. I don't despise the episode, I just believe it could have gone through some script tweaking. Maybe something about Harvey. Something about Harvey could have worked a little bit better. It's not that bad, but just for me, and I feel many other fans there, there's not too much to like, but with that being said, there's not too much to hate either. One season later, we get another Edward-centered story called Edward the Male. When Percy is in need of maintenance, the other engines nominate Edward to take the mail run, thinking that he knows what to do. Edward does not, but so as not to look inexperienced, he collects the mail anyway. Unfortunately, he mixes all the deliveries up. Edward realizes that he needs Percy's help, and by asking Percy, he realizes he is wiser for taking advice. I don't see many people talking about this one. When fans talk about a good Hits era episode, they tend to lean in on Edward the Great. And as much as I love that one too, with its own recreation of the tortoise and the hare, it falls flat since Edward did feel slightly off as he needed the victory of the race to feel important, otherwise he would feel useless and old due to his physical capabilities. I really like this episode as it tackles a topic that actually does something different with Edward. It gives him an actual flaw, and the one that makes sense as well. It accurately portrays Edward's insecure side, and the strain that Edward knows how to do everything puts him on him in a perfect representation on how the engines see him. I think it is a highly underestimated Edward-centric episode, and I don't understand why it's connected with an out-of-character Edward moment, when it's actually a very good narrative about pressure and how Edward feels pressured by everyone's admiration for him. The fact that Edward who at this point has proved himself as an older, wiser, and more experienced engine, realizes that he still doesn't know everything in the story is one component that I really liked. This is sort of demonstrated by the scene where Percy, who at this point was established as the youngest core character, advises Edward on how he delivers the mail. A lot of criticism stems from the question on how does Edward not know something? I enjoy how this episode explores that, especially when he gains knowledge from the youngest member of the Steam team. It's a cute idea. I do see the type of criticism towards the episode for Edward to feel silly for asking help instead of feeling unsure about it with all the pressure into thinking he can do it by himself. I believe Edward sees it more as him taking care and doing it by himself instead of having it think it's silly to ask for help. Fans tend to be very overprotective of Edward having flaws, which doesn't make sense. He is allowed to have flaws. Any character who is considered a main should have flaws. Even during the first mainstream movie, Tatmar, he was written out. And that was with Britt Allcraft and David Mitten. I feel like the reason alone says that Edward doesn't have as much of a main presence in the show as fans want to believe that he does. Edward's main story arc was completed during season 2. He was then utilized as a character for explanation and guidance, and that was it. This is why, in episodes like Edward the Really Useful Engine and Old Reliable Edward, they were reusing the old narrative lines for him by season 6, and while those episodes were fine, he didn't really continue to grow. Therefore, it wasn't necessary to maintain him in the main cast. I'm not that upset that Edward left since at that point he just stopped bringing anything regularly fresh to the series. Since season 5, he has been outshined by the other core cast members, hence his departure from the ensemble was unavoidable. Which brings me to my claim that Edward lacks any defining flaws in the show. He never really showed any weaknesses until season 2, because he had already undergone his arc. But I love how this episode looked at a potential flaw Edward might possess. Which is why I mostly don't mind a shed for Edward since it explored the Edward has a hard time asking for help and Edward has a hard time saying no concepts seen in Edward and Mel. They are really interesting additions to Edward's character and help make a good plot while at the same time not derail his character.
Overall, Edward has his ups and downs during the hit era. He has some strong episodes here and there, but it is up for debate if those episodes outweigh the weak ones from this era. I hope I was able to give you guys a newfound love for Edward in the mail, and help you realize despite it being a weak episode that Edward Strikes Out has more thought put into its production than what might meet the eye. I would like to give a huge shout out to my friend Aiden, who helped me writing the script for this video. All his links to his socials will be in the description below. That's all from me today guys, thank you and I hope to see you guys again. Go get him Edward!